If you want to find out what is the truth about COVID-19, you better listen to this video. If you want to understand and find out what you have heard it's true or not, you better pay attention. My name is Dr. Moss from Medwell Medical. The reason I do this Facebook Live now is because there is a lot of information that you're bombarded and you have some questions and concerns and you have more questions and more questions. I have made this video to answer some of the common questions that I have been asked repetitiously and most of the questions are same or similar. So the first thing is, if you have any questions, put it in the comments below. If you're listening to this and watching this live. If you are not watching this live, you can email us at drmaz at medwellnj.com. Unfortunately, there is a lot of information. Some of them are good information. Some of them are false information. There are a lot of basic information as far as precautionary measures with social distancing, with washing your hands, with putting masks on. You have listened to instructions from the guidelines from our governor. So those are some basic information. As I said, I highly advise you to take pen and a piece of paper, write your questions down and take notes about what I'm about to say. We're going to go over statistics. We're going to more importantly, go over what supplements you need to take to reduce inflammation, reduce toxicity and improve immune response. So ready to get started, ready to get empowered in finding the truth about COVID-19. Let's get started. We are all stressed. Now, stressed emotionally is killing the whole nation, okay, because of this coronavirus disaster. Some of us, we are in the panic mode. Some of us, we are in the fear mode. Some of us, we are getting depressed. A lot of elderly, because they have been told to stay home, do nothing, don't go out, you may die. They stay home and they're getting depressed. So I want you to understand, let's define stress. Stress does not have to be only psychological. Stress is psychological, physiological, structural, and chemical. An example of a chemical stress is tobacco use. It is uh, alcohol use, which there is more consumption of alcohol now than before, same thing as tobacco, because people are told to stay home, okay? Example of physical stress is pain, aches and pains that you have, knee pain, back pain, uh, neuropathy. Stress could be emotional, obviously, such as divorce, marital problems, kids' problems, parents' problems. So combination of that, it takes its toll on your body. And then if you add fear to it, it's gonna get even worse because you get depressed. So the answer to COVID-19 is not to stay home indefinitely and get stressed. What you need to do is to stay positive. I don't want you to watch Channel 12 news all day long because that's all about negativity. It brings you down. The number of death rates, the number of mortality, how many people died in Brazil, Stay positive and surround yourself with positivity. This is the time to be positive. Just as a side note, I tell you, I'm not a political person. Most of you who know me know that about me. I'm not a political person. I'm just observing something about our president, President Trump, that I'm not saying I like him. I'm not saying I dislike him. I'm not saying what he's saying I agree with or disagree with. What I'm about to say is the general statement. President Trump's approval rating has skyrocketed past several weeks. And what I associate that with is because he's always positive. He is always positive and shatters negativity. He always says, we are the best country in the world. Let's make America great again. We have the best healthcare system. We have the best cars. We have the best economy. On and on and on and on and on. The rate of unemployment 
before COVID-19 was dropping tremendously. Now, I'm not saying what he's saying is right or wrong. I'm just saying it's positive. And people at get attracted to positivity. So, this is the time to keep your guards up. Don't bring your guards down. Stay focused. Pay attention to what needs to be done. COVID-19. COVID-19 is a type of a coronavirus. There's different types of a coronavirus. This is not the only one. Okay, and it's not the first one that the America was attacked with. There was SARS-1, there was uh, different types of flu that they were talking about, MRSA, so on and so forth. This COVID-19 virus, it has been known, it's a disease of hypoxia. What that means in plain English it is a systemic disease that affects the whole entire body. It's not only respiratory or your lungs, okay? It affects every cell in your body. Hypoxia means lowering energy. So it puts the body to the exhaustion and deprives every cell for oxygen. That's why you cannot even walk three feet when you have COVID-19. So it takes two weeks that you need to quarantine yourself. Then after you come out of quarantine, you may think you can go to grocery shopping or go back to work for a couple hours or go for a walk. When you try it, you can't because your body is exhausted and it takes another week to get your energy back. Now, there is a reason behind all of this. By the way, everything I say is my opinion, number one. Number two, there is no cure for COVID-19 now, number three, which don't panic, it's okay, because there's no cure for influenza virus either, okay? Number three is I try to use statistics behind everything I say. If there is no statistics, is my opinion based on research. So later on, I don't want you to go and say, Dr. Ma said, well, no, there is a cure for COVID-19. There is a cure for this or that. I'm not saying that. And I have to be careful of saying that because there is no cure for many chronic conditions, including coronavirus. So you need to understand there are other viruses, including influenza virus, pneumonia virus, and don't think that you are super sterile, you are super star, you are 100% healthy up until March 1st, and after March 1st, you got COVID-19 and you're sick. This is not how this happened. So that's what you need to do, you need to Write this down for me. Take a pen and piece of paper, write this down, because I'm gonna repeat this several times, not only for COVID-19, I have said that many times before as well. You need to reduce inflammation, reduce toxicity, and improve immune response. This is the key to get better, okay? And we're gonna go over in detail what this means. As I said, coronavirus is a hypoxia systemic disease that affects the whole entire body. And it causes other chronic conditions as well. It is a disease that causes extreme low oxygen to the cells on the entire body and respiratory system, your lungs. So, by the way, I'm really, really happy to see hospitals finally, they are admitting that we need to boost our immune system. And how they're boosting the immune system is with vitamin C, which they're halfway on the right track, not even 100%. By the time you finish this video, you're gonna be 100% on the right track. Okay, so they are giving extreme amount of vitamin C to immune compromised patients, and that's fantastic. So if you have a chronic condition, including neuropathy, diabetes, heart problems, hypertension, autoimmune condition, you are considered a high risk. Now, when you are considered a high risk, that doesn't mean you stay home. That means if you want to get the best thing possible for your body is to get into our office, 
get tested, get the supplements that you need, get potentially an injection with a lot of supplements in it one time. It takes six seconds to do the injection versus 45 minutes of IV, and you're on your way out, and we'll see you next week. The second best method is going to call us through telemedicine and they send you the supplements. But it's not as good as the first method. And the third method is to go to local supermarket and get something that's half decent and try to do the best you can. But doing a couple of the things that I'm going to tell you is better than doing nothing. Like the old saying, doing 50% of something is better than 100% of nothing. Okay, so that's what you want to do. Now, as far as the vitamins that you need to take, so the first and foremost important thing is a vitamin D. Everybody should take vitamin D. Everybody that we test, well, I can't say everybody. Most people that we test, they are deficient in vitamin D. You need to take 5,000 to 10,000 international units of vitamin D a day. There are published studies, yay, I can say that. There are medical published studies that show vitamin D3, it has helped immunity. Now, you need to understand something. You're talking to a functional medicine doctor. You're not talking to your primary care or a doctor who doesn't know functional medicine. The big difference is that the, usually the doctors, they follow lab ranges. In other words, they take you, they do labs, they look at the labs and they say what you need. Okay, so that's wrong because lab ranges, they're very wide. Functional ranges, they're narrower. What that means, that means LabCorp or Quest Diagnostics or reference by reference lab, the normal range of vitamin D is from 30 to 100. So if you're 50 or 60 years old, if let's say you're 60 years old, you get tested, your lab range is 31. And there is another person who's 60 years old, they do the blood test and their vitamin D level is 99. So you're both considered normal. And that's not good. I know you can Google it. I know you can see 30 is normal, but 30 is not normal, in my opinion. Most of our patients, they go on vitamin D and we raise it to 80 or 90 or 100. Is it possible? Yes, it is possible if you take the right vitamin D. Most people are under the impression, which we're going to talk on the next section, that if they take a prescription vitamin D, it's better than the non-prescription vitamin D that they could buy. Well, wrong. Prescription vitamin D is synthetic, and it's D2, number one. It's D2, it's not D3. Your body needs D3. Prescription vitamin D is D2 and not D3. Most people don't know that. But I do because I'm in this functional medicine uh, anti-aging medicine, okay? The next thing, very important, write this down, active B vitamin. A B vitamin that is active, a B complex and other B vitamins. There is not sufficient amount of all Bs in one B complex pill, okay? So you need to take a methylated B vitamin. What that means, that means your body needs to absorb the vitamin B. There is an old saying, you are what you eat. Well, that's wrong. I was on Channel 2 News multiple times getting interviewed nationally. Okay? What I said in those interviews, one of them was, you are not what you eat. You are what you absorb. What you put in your mouth, that doesn't mean it gets absorbed. So, you need to take a vitamin B, that's absorbable, that your body absorbs it. That's imperative, okay? The next thing that we're gonna talk about is vitamin C. Vitamin C 
has antibacterial, antimicrobial, anti-inflammatory properties. That's what you need to do. Remember, reduce inflammation, reduce toxicity, and improving your immune response. That is what you need to do. So vitamin C, it's great. It has tremendous amount of anti-inflammatory properties and lowers inflammation immediately. That is why it is used in hospitals, which I'm really happy it's getting used. The best source of vitamin C that you need to take is liposomal vitamin C because liposomal vitamin C, the reason for that is because vitamin C is water soluble. If it doesn't get into the cells, it goes out of your system, okay? That is why when you pee later on after you take vitamin C, there is, it's yellow, okay? Because it's everything going out of system, so money in, money out, okay? So what you need to do, you need to get a liposomal vitamin C so it opens the cell and goes in the cell, the cell mitochondria, not only to give it energy and it causes reducing inflammation and boost immunity. Vitamin C is very important and we need to take it, which we're gonna discuss in the next part, is the reason you need to take vitamin C because we are the only mammals in the world that we do not make vitamin C. We rely on outside source. So we need to take vitamin C because you, you, our body needs it. So that's why you are totally dependent on taking vitamin C through food and through supplements, mainly through supplements, and we're gonna talk later about it. The next thing is zinc. Zinc is essential for immunity. Now, all zincs are not equal. I want you to understand. The type of zinc that you take is important, like the other type of vitamin C, B, and D. The type is important, how you take it is important, how much you take is important, so on and so forth. So zinc data, medically published data, has showed that if you take zinc, it's going to help immunity and helping COVID-19 to get rid of it. There is some data that was recently published that zinc lozenges are better absorbable than other form of zinc, okay? So zinc lozenges is the best method of taking zinc, especially with COVID-19 because COVID-19 affects your throat and your respiratory system. And when you take a couple of zinc lozenges twice a day, what it does, it's going to stop the replication and duplication of the virus because these viruses duplicate and replicate and they thrive on it, okay? So it stops the duplication and replication of the virus. In fact, there was a Jewish doctor in New York City. I listened to his interview, very impressive. He treated 600 patients with hydrochloroquine, which in this country it's called plaquenol, which is an anti-malaria drug. That plus zithromycin, most of you know that as z -Pak. When you get flu, you get z -Pak. Plus zinc, combination of these, not one of them. Combination of them, it works and it works well for patients, his patients. He can say that, I can't say that. Okay, because he did it for his patients. He did it for 600 plus patients. Now it could be more because this was about 10, 12 days ago when I was researching for this topic. Every single one of his 600 plus patients got better within a matter of few days. And the reason there has not been double blind studies or randomized studies about this, this is just a his own study, okay? And I'm sure there's gonna be a randomized study by pharmaceutical companies later on because they're gonna make money out of it, okay? So zinc is extremely important because it gets depleted in our body. Our body, we take a lot of junk food, soda, caffeine, sugar, so it depletes zinc amount in the body. 
And that is one of the things that we give to our patients with chronic autoimmune conditions, zinc. So if you are, have diabetes, if you have thyroid, if you have autoimmune condition, I don't even need to test you for it. You are low. And by taking the supplements that I'm telling you, within a matter of weeks, you should feel better. And many of our patients have felt better. The best type of zinc that you take is zinc picolinate or zinc glycinate. Like I said, there's different types of vitamin C, there's different types of vitamin B, there's different type of zinc. Zinc picolinate and zinc glycinate. The best form of delivery is zinc lozenges, okay? So if you're home, you're going to a grocery store, you have to go to work, you have to go meet a friend, take a couple of zincs. So it stops the duplication and replication of the virus. Next, probiotics. Probiotics is very important in healing. Probiotics is extremely important for healing. When you were in, I don't know, middle school or high school, you learned about science, how the body works. Most of you, I don't know if you remember or not, they used to say 80% of your immune system comes from where? 80% of your immune system comes from your gut. Okay? So, you need to fix your gut. There's also a saying that your gut is your second brain. Well, to me, that's wrong. Your gut is your first brain. This is based on treating thousands of patients, thousands of patients that we found out are physicians in the office after doing repetitiously and repetitiously and repetitiously, treating patients found out, let's fix the gut. 20, 30, 40, 50, up to 80% of the symptoms will go away because nobody has fixed the gut of a person who have a thyroid problem or diabetes. The thyroid doctor looks here and that's it. Diabetes looks at the pancreas and that's it. They manage lab tests. We manage the patient. The, the name of your condition is gonna be your name's condition. If your name is Mary, your condition is gonna be Mary's condition. Okay, so we need to fix your gut. Probiotics helps fixing your gut. Probiotics means promoting life. Most of you have been taking junk food, synthetic medicine, exposed to fried food, soda, coffee, dairy, gluten, okay? You have created a lot of inflammation in your gut linings. When your gut lining is inflamed, what happens? The food doesn't get digested. When the food doesn't get digested, the undigested food goes to your bloodstream. So your brain constantly thinks, okay, well, I want to digest this protein. I want to digest this gluten. I want to digest uh, oat, barley, whatever you take, okay? But I can't, it's in the wrong place in the body. So that's why you suffer with exhaustion. That's why you cannot sleep because the part of the brain is called I mean, I don't want to be technical. The part, of, the part of the brain, it's called mesencephalon. That part of the brain, it's part of the brain stem. It keeps firing and makes you not to go sleep because it wants to help the body to heal, and it can't. Next, digestive enzymes. You need to understand. As I said, you are not what you eat. You are what you absorb. You can go to our website, drmaz.com, drmaz.com. Go see my interview about food and food sensitivity. I talk about that in detail. <clears throat> when you have leaky gut, these food, they don't get digested. And your immune system is shut down. I have never, ever seen a patient who felt great with a bad gut function. I also have not seen any 
patient with chronic conditions, including thyroid problem, diabetes, autoimmune, joint pain, fibromyalgia, rheumatoid arthritis, Sjogren's disease, leaky gut problem. None of those patients who didn't have a bad gut function. So we need to reduce inflammation, reduce toxicity, and improve immune response. Next, last but not least, I did a lot of research on this topic. It's silver. Yes, silver. I'm not talking about the silver that you can make in your garage and go sell it. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm not also talking about to, take, to get a bite of your silverware at home. That's not the type of silver I'm talking about. I'm talking about purified ionic silver. It comes in a liquid form. There are many published medical studies that show silver is anti-inflammatory, antibacterial, antiviral. People take this, people gargle with it, and two or three times a day, and they get better because when it's antiviral, it stops the duplication of the virus, stop getting energy from the body and giving it to the virus, and hopefully killing the virus. Is it a cure? No, it's not. Does it help the immune response? It, I'm sorry, does it help the immune response? You bet it does, okay? So silver is very, very important. Yeah, I made a note to tell you that when I was doing research that in the old days, they used to put silver coins in milk bottles. Now, the reason they used to do that is because way back when, they knew it has antibacterial properties and they went, when they put the silver coins in the milk, the milk didn't go bad. But unfortunately, they had too much silver in their body because that's not the type of silver that you need to take. And the term blue blood came from that because their blood would turn little with a blue tint and their face would become blue. I take silver every day. I gargle with it. You can't even drink it. What I mean by that is not drink eight ounces of it a day. If it goes in your stomach, it's okay. In fact, when babies are born, the first day they are cleaning the baby and what do they put, do you think, in the baby's eyes? Silver, liquid silver. Why? Because it has antibacterial, antiviral, and anti-inflammatory properties. When you go to local supermarket, you want to get bandages. There are silver ointment bandages because silver has these properties. So that's really good. Now, these are my top seven or eight supplements that I give to many of our patients with different dosages that has helped them a lot. Can I guarantee it's gonna help you? I don't know. I cannot guarantee anything. Has it been working for a lot of our patients? Yes, it has. It has worked on a lot of our patients successfully. Okay? So the bottom line is reduce inflammation, reduce toxicity, and improve your immune response. There are other supplements that you need to take that it will help this whole process, like selenium. Most of our patients who have a thyroid problem, we put them on zinc and selenium. Multivitamin, a good source of multivitamin is always good. Fish oil, fish oil is good. It has anti-inflammatory properties. You just wanna make sure you don't have fish allergies. Everything that I tell you, if you wanna be taking them and get the most effect, you need to go to a functional medicine doctor who understands functional medicine, who understands how to functionally evaluate you, who gives you the correct forms to evaluate you, who does the correct testing and interprets the testing functionally and gives you the supplements from different sources that we unfortunately have to get all our supplements from different sources because there's no one company that's good for everything. 
Okay, so that's what you need to do yourself. I'm educating you and I'm informing you. The decision is yours. You can take some of these supplements, you can go buy them, at least some of them, do something about it, improve your immune response, or you can come here and we do all of that for you and tell you what you need, or if you're afraid, or if you have COVID-19 symptoms, we don't want you to come here, we want you to call us, do a telehealth, we will talk to you, and we will make our best recommendation based on your needs. Yes, we do accept most insurance plans, including Medicare. Okay, another thing that's really good for immune system, which, again, it's not medically published, but it has been working for years, is stem cell injections. Okay, now I'm gonna be very careful. It is not a cure. There is not medically published journals that stem cells help. And there's reasons behind that. And the reason is because pharmaceutical companies cannot patent anything that's not synthetic. So pharmaceutical companies cannot patent vitamin C. They, in fact, they did vitamin D, which they messed up bad because they are telling people it's vitamin D and an average person doesn't ask if it's vitamin D2 or D3. And what your body needs is D3. But in those supplements is D2, the ones that pharmaceutical companies give. Same or similar story happened with uh, the fish oil. There was a big hype about fish oil. Fish oil has to be dried from sardines, anchovies, and merkel fish. These are the best type of fish oil that has omega-3, okay? So, this other company, I'm not sure, was it Pfizer or another company? I'm not really sure, came up with its synthetic pharmaceutical-derived fish oil and told all the doctors that fish oil is good so you should give it to their patients. So a lot of the doctors, they say, well, don't take this fish oil that you buy from supermarket or from a functional medicine doctor. You should take this fish oil because it's supposed to be pharmaceutical grade. But what happens, that fish oil came in, went out of the market within a matter of six months. Why? Because it created a lot of side effects for patients. Why? Because it was synthetically derived. The whole purpose of you being a mess is because you have a lot of toxicity. You have a lot of stuff in your body that your body doesn't know what to do with it. So we have to reduce toxicity and give you natural supplements. We see a lot of weight loss patients in this office. So what do we do for these patients? Reduce inflammation, reduce toxicity, improve immune response. We have had patients, I talk about that on my interview on channel two, that these patients, they, take salad, they have salad and chicken every day and they can't lose weight because they either have leaky gut, their gut function is not proper, they have uh, toxicity in their body, they have heavy metal toxicity in the body, okay? Which brings me to the next point you need to understand. With zinc, you have to be careful. Zinc is a heavy metal, okay? So heavy metal is not good if you take it every day. So if you have the COVID-19 symptoms, you can take it for five days, seven days, eight days. If you don't have it, you can take it for four or five days, double the dose, okay? And if for your general well-being and health, you can take a zinc lozenge every day. It's not that much, okay? But on the other hand, I, want, I don't want you to double dose, triple dose for next eight months, okay? Because you may have zinc heavy metal toxicity and that causes other problem, then we need to do chelation therapy. Good. So. Very important. These are the, some of the common questions I am asked, which I'm going to bring to your attention about 
the differences that what we talk about between different says between supplements and synthetic drugs, which means prescription medication. Sorry, I need a little water. So, FDA. Some patients, they ask, Dr. Maz, this supplement that you give us, is it FDA approved? So, and I say, no, it is not FDA approved. And you don't want it to be FDA approved. And this is the story behind that. FDA has FDA approval and FDA clearance. There's two different segments to Food and Drug Administration, okay? For if, and also FDA only approves drugs and devices. Drugs is metformin, Crestor, Lipitor, Devices is a TENS unit, back brace, neck brace. They are approved for a specific purpose. Metformin is for diabetics. RMA thyroid for thyroid patients. Back brace for back pain, okay? TENS for pain relief. So that's FDA approval. As far as FDA is concerned, FDA cannot approve food or supplements, something that's natural. Same thing with pharmaceutical companies cannot approve food or supplement or patent them. That's why you don't see vitamin C supplement made by Pfizer, made by Hoffman LaRoche. Okay, so it has to be having synthetic stuff in it to be able to be approved by FDA for a pharmaceutical company. Okay, like th that I told you, there's a big hype to have natural medicine in this country, which is about time to boost your immunity. I mean, I'm so excited about hospitals giving vitamin C to patients. This is fantastic news. But when pharmaceutical companies take a hint of what is going on, like they did with the D2 and the fish oil, which they messed up, I'm sure they're gonna come up with a vitamin C that helps your immune system, but then later on, we find the vitamin C that they made, it was synthetic and it didn't get digested in the body, okay? Ascorbic acid, is not vitamin C. Ascorbic acid is the cheapest type of vitamin C label that you could buy, but that's not vitamin C. It messes you up even more. It causes more inflammation. I've had patients on ascorbic acid thinking they're taking vitamin C. Vitamin C has to be derived liposomally. It has to have bioflavonoids with them to be able to digest it because what good does it do if it goes in and goes out? You are what you absorb. Remember that, and I hope you wrote that. So what we do, we do science-based protocols that actually works. As I said, all vitamin Cs are not equal, all fish oils are not equal, all vitamin Bs are not equal. We have had many patients, they come in, they used to be on a lot of medication. They wanna get rid of it. So they listen to a lecture like this, or any other lecture, or they talk to their next door neighbor or their spouse, then they go buy supplements. They buy supplements, they spend a ton of money on supplements, and then what happens, they don't get better, and sometimes they even become worse because they wanna do it themselves, and then they bring a whole bag of supplements to our office to say, doc, I'm eating healthy, I'm having these supplements, I'm miserable, and you're my last resort. And the reason for that is because they're not taking the right supplements with the right amount of dosage from drives from the right amount of sources from the companies that we recommend, okay? So it's important. You need to understand this is something else which I face with, especially with, with elderly population. Drugs versus supplements. Unfortunately, we are pre-programmed that we are healthy, then we start having symptoms, then we get sick, then we go to a doctor, 
Then we take a pill to get rid of these symptoms, not the cause, just the symptoms, and we try to get off those pills. So pills are our friend for a short period of time and our enemy because nobody wants to be on pills, which is good, which is good. But the problem is supplements, they look like pills. And when some people, they, we tell them, you need to take supplements, oh, I don't want to take anything. Or, um, you know what, I, I have to go to my doctor to ask him if I take vitamin C, it's good or not. Well, your doctor has to have a knowledge about functional medicine first, and most doctors don't, okay? Or they say, well, I'm taking enough pills. Well, those are synthetic pills, okay? Supplements, they work the opposite. Now, what I mean by that is you are healthy, you need to take these bunch of supplements to stay healthy, you follow me? And if you get symptoms, you double the dose to go back towards health so you don't get sick. And when you're sick, you have to alter the dosage for your needs so you go this way, okay? Medication takes you this way. You wanna go this way, okay? So, so supplements are essential. What I mean by that, let me repeat because I wanna make sure you understand that. Your body needs supplements to survive. Your body that you have, you must give it supplements. You don't have a choice. You don't have a choice. It's like, for example, if uh, you go to a doctor for shoulder pain, okay, and the doctor says, well, you need an MRI. So you don't say, well, can I do a CAT scan? No, you need an MRI. Okay, so that's essential for your care. Now for your body, supplements specifically, the ones I told you, they are essential. Your body requires it, your body needs it. You need to give it to your body so it works physiologically optimally. Your body works as one unit. You cannot have a good thyroid with a bad gut. You cannot have a good gut with a bad th thyroid. They work together, okay? So you need to understand that. And I hope you do at the moment. Okay, so you need to take supplements to stay healthy. Medications, they are prescribed to manage a uh, condition versus supplements, your body needs it like water. It's like, for example, uh, you cannot say, well, you know what, my, my body is good, I don't need water. Well, no. Your body needs water. You need to take eight glasses of eight ounce bottle every day, 64 ounces, ultimately. Now, can you take 64 ounces? Probably not, but well, just do 32. That doesn't mean don't do any, okay? So your body needs supplements just like your body needs water. Next thing, dosage. The dosage that's on medication is the dosage that your doctor told you to take and you should follow that, okay? The dosage that's on your vitamin C or vitamin D or uh, vitamin B or silver, whatever you take, or uh, prebiotics or probiotics or digestive enzyme, the dosage on those is to Take every day for a long term. Remember, I told you you have to be on it for a long time. Every day to stay healthy, okay? So you, the dosage is for you that are healthy to stay healthy. So when they say 500 milligrams of vitamin C is good or 250 milligrams of vitamin C is good, yes, it's good if you feel good to take it every day as long as it, you take a good kind that gets absorbed. But when you get sick, you need 2,000 milligrams of vitamin C. We have had patients who were on 8,000 milligrams of vitamin C, 8,000. I mean, not for three months, for one week, okay? And they got better, okay? So it's really, really important to understand the dosage on the bottle of the supplements versus the dosage on the bottle of your medication. Next common question. Dr. Maz, I take an orange or two, I cut it in, 
four slices every day I have two oranges. I don't need vitamin C. Really? Okay. The amount of vitamin C, again, the amount of vitamin C that you need to take every day to stay healthy, that amount of vitamin C, it's gonna be in probably 27 oranges. So, are you willing to have 27 oranges a day? Get real, okay? Number one. Number two, you have to be careful about the sugar in orange, okay? A lot of sugar, not good. This vitamin C, liposomal vitamin C, doesn't have that. Number three, how much of the vitamin C that you have from the orange gets absorbed versus this vitamin C, that's two pills, 2,000 milligrams. The 2,000 milligram vitamin C that I'm talking to you about, it has bioflavonoids in it, so to be able absorbed. Or we have the vitamin C shots. We have actually an energy boosting shot. We have an immune boosting shot in the office, which has a list of, I think, 15 to 27 different supplements customized for our patients with little to zero side effects. We haven't had any side effect and results happen immediately. Healing starts immediately after a one shot to your buttocks area or deltoid area that takes four seconds. And it, the best part is it bypasses your digestive tract. So you could have a messed up digestion, but maybe put it in the blood, it's done. That's why our patients like these immune boosting, energy boosting injections versus the IVs, the vitamin C IVs, that the bags that you see. For 45 minutes, you need to sit down. Okay. And God knows what's in it because they mix it themselves. Okay. We get it from reputable pharmaceutical grade, but natural supplements. And I'm on them and I love them. My family is on them. They love it. We have more energy, better sleep, better gut function, and feel better when we get up in the morning. And that works amazing. Good. So the next thing that we need to talk about is, as I said, Quickly, I'm going to talk to you about this medical model of helping you is you have a lung problem, let's give you medication for your lungs. You have a thyroid problem, let's give you medication for your thyroid. You have a stomach issue, let's give you medication for your stomach. This doctor doesn't care about this doctor. This doesn't care about this doctor. Both of them, they don't care about their stomach. But supplement and functional medicine model, we see how the body works synchronously and synergistically with all the organs and what your body needs to function better. It's all about how you feel, okay? The next thing is how these supplements, they work synergistically, which is, we touched on a little bit. These supplements, if you pick one or two of them, yes, you may feel better, I hope you feel better, but, Supplements work synergistically. They work harmonically together, just like your body does. Your body works harmonically. Your organs function harmonically through the body. So same thing. You don't pick and choose if you don't have to. Oh, I'm gonna take this, but I'm not gonna take this. I mean, we have had patients like that. They come in, we tell them everything. Oh, okay, well, I don't believe in this, but I believe in that. Mary, it's not a religion, okay? You need to take these based on your symptoms, based on your forms that you filled out, based on your consultation with one of our physicians. These are the supplements that we recommend to help your general overall well-being. If you take it, great. If you don't take it, it's not gonna change my life. I'm here to educate you, not medicate you, okay? So the next thing is you need to take these supplements in the right format, whether it's lozenges, whether it's sublingual drops, vitamin D. Vitamin D, the best kind of vitamin D that we have experienced is, uh, I think, $30 a bottle, and it's 
liquid, one drop is 5,000, two drop is 10,000 international units. Our patients during this time when they're stressed, when they cannot sleep, they take four to five drops a day. And we have had a patient who came to me and said my primary care physician was stunned of what I have done that my below 30 vitamin D right now is above 100. And he wanted to know what you did, Dr. Maz, because he wants to put his patients on it. So I called that physician and I told him, get vitamin D from PRL laboratories. We use that, I'm on it personally, and it works. What that means, that means it gets absorbed and your body can uses it, use it, okay? So right form, right dosage, and right time. You cannot take melatonin in the morning. You have to take it at night, okay? So the next thing that we're gonna talk about is IV versus shots. The shots are extremely important and it works much, much, much better than IV. This has been our experience. It may not have been other doctor's experience. We have them both in the office, but most patients, they want to get it for four seconds. It goes in the bloodstream as opposed to go on IV, okay? Multivitamin, a good source of multivitamin. I told you it's good to take. We deal with a lot of companies who make a pharmaceutical grade not with synthetic stuff. That means with good quality stuff, we buy the supplements from them and we pass it along to our patients. Why? Because in the old days, I used to go tell patients, take vitamin D, take vitamin C, take uh, monolaurin. Monolaurin Lauren is another supplement that is really, really good for especially viruses. But, and then they would go get the junk. I mean, vitamin D, just to let you know, vitamin D, there was a company who was driving vitamin D from sheep's wool around the sheep. Sheep's wool, make vitamin D, sell it. $4 a bottle, $5 a bottle. Well, there's a difference between a $5 bottle of vitamin D versus a $30 bottle of vitamin D. Okay? So, as a side note, I wanted to tell you that. There is, unfortunately, we have to deal with multiple companies. There is not one company that we can buy everything from. I wished it was. So we have to have accounts with multiple companies. Sometimes we go visit these companies to make sure that stuff that they put is the stuff that we want them to put in the supplements. We find what works and what doesn't work. We, I mean, I go to a lot of seminars up until recently, but now we do webinars to find what is the best and latest research. And a lot of the study that I did during the past several weeks, I'm giving you the fast version of it. There is no cure for COVID-19, but don't worry, because there is no cure for a flu virus. There is no cure for diabetes. There is no cure for thyroid. We just know how to manage these chronic conditions, which is why functional medicine is extremely important because Usually physicians that are really, really good with acute conditions, such as broken shoulder, broken hip, heart attack. I mean, we are all grateful to them, okay? But when it comes to chronic conditions, they drop the ball. This country, when it comes to chronic condition, is pill after pill after pill every day, day after day after day after day. How long do you have to be on these pills? For the rest of your life. How long you take them? Every day. Okay, and that's not a cure. Okay, so, but other countries, they're more into holistic natural health. Okay, not, I'm, I'm not comparing comp country versus country. I'm just informing you about what I know. Okay, so preventing getting sick is much easier than when you're sick to survive. And when you don't have symptoms, that doesn't mean you're 100% healthy. When you don't have symptoms, that doesn't mean you're 100% healthy. Symptoms is one of the last things that appears when you're unhealthy. So in order to keep you healthy, you need the supplements. Okay. Now, statistics. 
as I said, your body is under stress. What you need to do, you need to de-stress. If you are diabetic in, or if you have neuropathy, if you have pain, you're a high risk person. When you're a high risk, if you stay home, you get depressed. When you get depressed, you watch TV, you get more depressed. Okay, if you're high risk, you need to get the care that you need now. You need to call our office, come to our office, get evaluated because you're high risk. If you're low risk, we can help you with telemedicine and help you what needs to be done. Most of our patients are coming back now. Today is uh, April 28th. They're coming back in the next few weeks. We're going to be probably full time again. Okay, so you need to take care of yourself. There is no one pill or potion that you need to take to keep you healthy in substitution of all the supplements that I told you or to take care of COVID-19. You need to reduce inflammation, reduce toxicity, improve immune response. As part of our panel on top that I was talking to you about, about the supplements, you need to add another one. It's turmeric. We use an active form of turmeric that has other enzymes and other homeopathic products in it that works really, really well. I use it myself. My family uses it. A lot of our patients are uses it. We get a shipment of 30 bottles. It's gone within a matter of five days because our patients, they take it. Why? Because they want to stay healthy. They want to reduce inflammation. And it, it works. It's from a company called Apex Energetics. You can buy it from us. You can, I'm not sure if you actually can buy it from them because they don't sell to public. I don't think so. I don't know. You can call them or call our office. If you need it, we put it as part of the bundle for you. Okay? Okay. Very interesting. I was on CDC's website. I researched a lot during the past several weeks. I was on CDC's website, NIH website, and PubMed. Okay. What I found very interesting is the following. People who have COVID-19 symptoms, okay, they go to hospitals now. Okay, some of them they get tested, some of them they don't get tested. Both categories, they are classified as COVID-19, the diagnosis code. Then these people, if they are high risk, they go to intensive care units. Okay, if they die, this happened in New York City, I'm talking about the New York City statistics. If they die, most of these patients, they had pneumonia, flu, hypertension, some had diabetes, and COVID-19, which were tested, and COVID-19, which were not tested. They all get classified as COVID-19 mortality. You follow what I'm saying is? So because these hospitals are supposed to report to CDC. So CDC clumps all of these mortality together and classified as COVID-19 death. Well, that's extremely wrong. Now, why they do that? I understand. They're bombarded with so much research. They're bombarded with so much data from different parts of the country. All their staff, they're working double hard. I do understand. And in fact, there is no way that they can distinguish these type of mortality. But that's what they do. So I need you to be aware because I'm here to educate you. The mortality rate that you hear that has to do with COVID-19 is not only COVID-19. Some of these patients, they died of pneumonia. Some of these patients, they died of flu. Okay. There is research that clearly states there are 6% of people who are high risk. The mortality rate of flu is 6% of high risk population. But the mortality rate of COVID-19 is less than 2% of the population who have high risk. So three times more. But COVID-19, it has a lot more contagiency rate than flu. I think three to four times more. 
So that's why more people they get COVID-19 than flu. But most of these people with COVID-19, they survive less than the flu high risk. So more people die of flu than COVID-19. That's published study. I'm not saying that. Medical journals say that or other physicians say that. It's all over Google. It was on my social media, the CDC uh, statistics on how it's wrong. So I'm transferring the knowledge to you. There is no way that they can distinguish like what, what was the exact reason the person died. Okay, so that's what puts people in panic mode. That's what puts people in panic mode and fear mode and negativity, and they want to hear more and more and more and more from different news channels, which, what do they get? Negativity, okay? Which I'm glad now there is some testing that's coming out, okay? Testing is going to help us. However, you need to understand something else about hospitals. This is just my opinion, Okay? One of the reasons, besides the fact that there's not enough testing, okay, so if two person, husband and wife, they go to a hospital, the husband is tested positive, the wife is te not tested, they're both considered COVID-19. These two patients, if they get a diagnosis code of COVID-19, the hospital gets more money. On top of that, they get more grants from the federal government because they treated more COVID-19 diagnosis patients. You follow me? In addition, now we are thanking all the healthcare workers that are helping our society, including our employees, to help patients. Okay, because up until several weeks ago, statistics showed the number one reason a person would go to an urgent care or emergency room or get hospitalized was back pain. The number one reason a person would go to an emergency room, urgent care, or a hospital was back pain. Not any of this virus. So, now they don't see these type of patients. And that's one of the reasons we are open. Because we see back pain patients. I mean, if there's one reason to be open as essential business, as our governor mandates us to stay open, is to take the pressures off the hospitals so they can treat more COVID-19 patients. I was talking to another friend of mine who was a cardiologist, and he works at Hackensack University Medical Center, and he said they took the cafeteria away and they put hospital beds in them because the whole hospital is about COVID-19. You follow me? So what I was saying is uh, as far as, yes, so hospitals, they make more money by diagnosing patients with COVID-19 and they don't want to see back pain patients. They want to see COVID-19 patients. Not only that, Insurance companies that are mandated to pay them more, waive deductibles and co-pays and pay them more because what happens, that's another fact that, for example, Tylenol, it's a drug. It's, as far as I'm concerned, is one of the most dangerous drugs that you can take. But this is not the topic about Tylenol now, okay? So... Tylenol, if you get it from a local pharmacy, a bottle of it, I don't know, $4, and the one pill becomes 20 cents, okay? So that pill is 20 cents. If you get that in a hospital fourth floor while you have uh, in the orthopedic uh, wing or in a whatever, hypertensive wing, that pill, that 20 cents, it's $5. They charge you plus the administration fee, so on and so forth, the nurse's time, so on and so forth. That same pill, if you get it in ICU, instead of $4, is $10. That same pill, if you get it in emergency room, it's $25, $30. The same pill. So 
There is an influx of all these COVID-19 patients, which thanks to our healthcare workers by being able to help, including our employees, including our associates and colleagues, but there's an influx of these people to emergency room and emergency rooms that are charging 50, 60, $70,000 a patient. By the time they do the EKG, they do the echocardiogram, they take the x-ray, they do breathing tests, the emergency room doctor sees them, they get hospitalized, on and on and on and on. Several are of our family and friends, they were experiencing that as well. So they have 50, 60, $70,000 bill. That's one patient, okay? Good, so this is just the statistics that I just, that I just wanted to discuss with you. Okay, now testing. Testing, there are more testing out up until recently. There was the nasal swab test, which was extremely uncomfortable, okay? Now they have a blood test, which to me, blood test is more accurate than the nasal swab, okay? The blood test is checking antibodies and immunoglobulins. These are, immunoglobulins are allergy sensitive receptors in your blood. There is immunoglobulin A, immunoglobulin M, and immunoglobulin G. If you are exposed with COVID-19 and you have symptoms, frankly, to me, quarantine yourself, go on the protocol I told you, and you should be fine. Because if you're positive or negative, the treatment is the same. I mean, if you have all these symptoms and you're negative, that doesn't mean you have to go out for a jog, okay? <clears throat> the next thing is because it has a high contingency rate, well, we do the test, you're negative two days after you may be positive, okay? But at least testing is available, okay? So IgA and IgM, immunoglobulin A and immunoglobulin M, they're more for acute COVID-19. So you have symptoms or you had symptoms yesterday or two days ago, you get this test done within a matter of minutes, you get the result. If it's positive, that means you were exposed. Immunoglobulin G is for delayed immune response, not acute. So you feel fine now, you do the test, you, it shows positive, that means you were exposed before. We have had patients who were exposed before without symptoms, but they have that antibody in their body that responds to this immunoglobulins, okay? But the problem is as a nation, Unfortunately, I have seen thousands of patients in our office. They're test hungry. Like for example, a uh, patient has a shoulder problem. They come to our office, we do an x-ray. We say, well, this is what's going on with your shoulder. Well, you know what? I wanna do MRI. Well, if you do an MRI, the treatment is the same as without an MRI. Let's get you out of pain, make you feel better. If you need it, then you do MRI. Okay, so don't be test hungry. We have had patients that they had the symptoms of COVID-19, the test was done, the test was negative and they were upset. Oh my God, I had all the symptoms, the test was negative. Oh, maybe the test was not right. Maybe it was not done the right way. Okay, so don't get entangled on testing, testing, testing. Okay, and the cost of all these testing is a lot more than the treatment. Go on the supplements. In the old days, up to 10, 12 years ago, we used to do a lot of testing in our office and the patients had to pay for a lot of them because insurance was not covering it, okay? So we did a lot of testing. We found out what needed to be done with the patient. Then we told the patient to pay, I don't know, $100, $200 for supplements. They couldn't afford it. Then we used to just give it away to them because we felt bad for them. Now we lessen the test, we're doing more accurate on-site testing and try to focus on treatment, not just testing. And the patients get better because everybody has to reduce their inflammation, everybody has to reduce their toxicity, everybody has to uh, improve their immune response, okay? Immune response also, 
this is something that I would like to say. There was a time in 1917 and 1918 about Spanish flu. Okay, I researched it. Manila University. I researched it and it was really, really interesting to me that the study concluded controlled patients who had the Spanish flu who were getting chiropractic care versus people who control set of group B who had the Spanish flu without chiropractic care. The patients who were getting chiropractic care, they were getting healed faster. Their immune system was improving faster. So we cannot say natural care, chiropractic care, they cure or they cure your immune system, but this study showed that it helped, okay? So overall, try to stay healthy, be well. Be, let me talk, talk to you a little about, I'm getting all these chats over here. We sanitize our office every day. We have anti-sanitization spray that we use in the office that is 100% organic and natural. Okay, I just want to go over quickly with our policy with our patients in the office. We bomb the office, even the walls, the tables, the equipment, everything with a professional grade sanitization system. So I feel honestly more sterile in the office than home. Definitely more sterile in the office than Home Depot or a Lowe's or a liquor store. Okay, so we do that, we give free mask, free gloves, free temperature reading to all of our patients. If you have COVID-19 symptoms, call us for a consultation on the phone. If you don't have the symptoms, if you're high risk or low risk, we will see you. Okay, try to make an appointment because we scatter the patients throughout the day. We have a protocol in the office for sleep problems. We have a protocol for anxiety, gut problem, thyroid problem, diabetes, so on and so forth. We have multiple physicians with different disciplines. I know the reason I say that is because most of you are our patients. Some of you are not our patients. You're just listening to this Facebook Live. We are in Northern New Jersey in Bergen County. The office is clean. You can come on over for an energy shot. You can come on over for a B12 shot, okay? If this information was helpful, please click the link below and share this link. If you have any questions and you're watching this live, put your questions in the comments below and I'll try to answer them today or within 24 hours. If you want to email me, you can email me at drmaz at drmaz.com, D-R-M-A-Z at D-R-M-A-Z dot com. We have had many patients, we have helped many patients with chronic conditions, including lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, osteoarthritis, thyroid problem, diabetic problem. We have placed these patients into remission or at least putting them towards remission by them expressing their symptoms to us. It's getting less and less and less and, and dependency to medication becomes less and less and less by just simply reducing inflammation, reducing toxicity and improving your, their immune response. Everybody needs to get functional assessment who comes to our office because we want to see what is wrong, what organs they function properly, what organs they do not function properly. We do a lot of on-site testing. So you come in with symptoms and hopefully we give you some stuff by the time you're done and you leave the office with supplements that helps you heal fast and start immediately. Once again, my name is Dr. Maz from Medwell Medical in Midland Park, Bergen County, New Jersey, and be safe and God bless.